Hi everyone and welcome back to another BTLO replay. Before we jump into Countdown with Josh, be sure to follow us on X or join the Discord server to keep in touch with the BTLO community. Links are in the description box below. Right, let's hand over to Josh. Hi everybody, in this video we're going to be going through the Countdown investigation, which is a medium difficulty digital forensics investigation that's worth 50 points. Before we jump into the lab, we're just going to take a look at the scenario text. Um, and also some of the lab properties, just so we can kind of get an idea of what we're going to be dealing with when we actually jump into the lab. So the scenario is, NYC police received information that a gang of attackers has entered the city and are planning to detonate an explosive device. Law enforcement have begun investigating all leads to determine whether this is true or a hoax. Persons of interest were taken into custody and one additional suspect named Zeri was detained while officers raided his house. During the search, they found one laptop, collected the digital evidence, and sent it to the NYC Digital Forensics Division. Police believe Zeri is directly associated with the gang and are analysing his device to uncover any information about the potential attack. And then just as a disclaimer, the story, all names, characters, and incidents portrayed in this challenge are fictitious and any relevance to real-world events is completely coincidental. Okay, cool. So we kind of understand what's going on, right? We are working in the NYC Digital Forensics Division. We've got this uh, evidence that we need to analyze. It's from a suspect named Zeri. Um, and we're just going to be taking a look at it and seeing what we can find about this bomb threat. So on the left, we can see the tools that are featured in this lab. So things like autopsy, we're going to be using that uh, presumably for hard drive disk forensics. We've got Windows File Analyzer, Windows Prefetch View, Jumpless Explorer and SQL Light uh, DB browser. And we can see the technique uh, that's being used here. So we're actually gonna take a look at this. This kind of gives us a nice little hint uh, into what we're gonna be dealing with. So if we do Mitre Attack Framework, we find the right link and then we search for this TID. Encrypted channel, okay, interesting. Adversaries may employ a known encryption algorithm to conceal command and control traffic. So it might not necessarily be that, right? It could just be anything to do with some kind of encrypted method of communication. So that would be quite interesting. We'll keep an eye out for that. Uh, cool, that's pretty much everything that we need to know. So we've got the lab loaded up here. We're just going to sign in quickly. We'll check the details tab for the credentials. So BTLO. Test BTLO 2021. And then we're going to take a look at the questions. We can see what things we're being asked to complete. So verify the disk image. They want the sector count and MD5. Decryption key of the online messenger app. So there's that kind of encrypted channel uh, that we saw in the in the technique ID listed. Things about phone numbers. File sent by email date and time of the attack and GPS, uh, GPS coordinates. Cool. Okay. So we'll take a look at what files are also provided on the desktop. So if we open up countdown, let's see what's in here. Uh, this is all the autopsy case files. So we don't really care about any of that. And then investigation files, we've got readme scenario. That's probably going to be the same uh, as what we have here on the details tab. So we're not going to open that, uh, but we have hints, which is quite interesting. Okay, so we can see here we've got each of the questions. We've also got a little hint to help us. Um, and because this information is provided to us in the lab, we are actually going to use some of these uh, as well. So just some nice little hints to help us. Um, so we will keep this open. We will, we will, we will use this Pop that over there. Uh, I don't think we need this at the moment. Let's just double check. We have all the tools we need. Cyber chef, autopsy. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So let's take a look at question one, then we'll see what the hint is for this question. Verify the disk image, submit the sector count and MD5. So we want to look at the hard drive image that was acquired from Zeri's device. Uh, we can see here the hint is read the Zeri EO1 text file that was generated during evidence collection. So, I mean, it's probably going to be something like FTK Imager um, that was used to acquire it. So we want to take a look at the EO1. So this might be something we can grab from, well, we did have the disk image here, didn't we? 
Seri, Seri EO1 text document. This will give us information about the acquisition that took place. Uh, so we can see, yeah, it was, it was FTK Imager that was used. Let's close that. And we're going to keep the questions tab open just because this should be quite an easy one to answer because um, we can just look for it in here, right? So this is the, the drive that was acquired. It's a physical drive. Um, we can see the sector count here. So we can actually just grab that straight away and we're going to copy that and just put it in here. We'll do our comma space for the next answer. Uh, and I want the MD5 hash of the disk image, which is just down here, computed hashes MD5. So again, we'll just copy this and paste it. And then that should give us the answer to question one. Perfect. Cool. So we don't need this again. We'll close this. Um, so question two, what is the decryption key of the online messenger app used by Zeri? And the hint we provided is check installed programs and Windows prefetch listings in autopsy to identify installed applications. And let's just put on word wrap quickly. Uh, look for online messaging apps, especially ones that can be used for secure communication. Once you think you've found the right program, try researching online for app name decryption key. Autopsy can be used to extract files from the disk image if you take a deeper look. Okay, so the first thing I want to take a look at is I want to open up Autopsy. Um, and we saw that in this countdown folder, we had the Autopsy case files, which means that um, we already have the case in Autopsy, so we don't need to ingest the disk image and wait for it to process. So we'll let autopsy load up and we're going to see if we can open up a recent case. And then we're going to take a look at install programs, which is one of the things that autopsy will pull out for us. Um, and we'll just check there first, see what the results look like. Uh, and we can go from there. So we're just waiting for autopsy to start up here. Just give it a second and then we'll get a pop up if we want to create a new case or open an existing one. So again, let's just review this. So install programs and Windows prefetch. Online messaging apps. So I mean, there's some that come to mind already, right? So things like Signal is obviously a very big one. Um, WhatsApp as well, potentially. Although this lab is from 2021, I believe. So probably not WhatsApp. More likely to be something like Signal. Um, but I'm sure you know the name will stand out when we when we find it. So if we do open recent case, it should just open up the the countdown autopsy case for us. Okay, cool. So yeah, we can see the countdown cases here. It's that countdown folder that we saw on our desktop. So we can click open, and it's just going to open up this case for us with the digital evidence that's been um, added as a data source into the case. So which means we can just look through the the um, EO one hard drive image file straight away, which would be nice. So it's going to let that open up the case database. We're going to see if there's anything else we need while we're in autopsy. What is the registered phone number and profile name of Zeri in the message application? Okay, so for this, we're going to need to pull out a file from the disk image and then load up that database on our analysis machine. That's fine. Um, and then, yeah, this is again to do with that database. So that's two. Uh, then question five is something we probably want to come back to in autopsy. Um, but I think based on how these questions are written, I am going to try and complete them in order because um, they kind of flow quite nicely. So for now, we're just going to focus on question two. So we need to find the application that's installed and being used. And then we also need to find the decryption key of that so that we can get into the database file. So let's just start off by looking at installed programs. So we can see here on the left hand side, installed programs. Uh, we've got all the software names here. So let's just see if anything stands out as a encrypted messaging application. There's nothing there. I think that is everything. Yeah, that is everything. So no, nothing here stands out. Um, these kind of look like default uh, programs to be honest, apart from this one, which is quite interesting, eraser. Um, but no, there's nothing that stands out. So there's a couple other places that we can look. Um, let's have a think. Uh, okay. So let's have a look at, let's have a look at web searches, right? Cause if it was an application, the user is going to have downloaded it to their machine at some point, uh, presumably they could have put it on by USB. Um, but you know, a quick win would be web search history. Uh, so we can see here, we, we've got the eraser that we saw before, but we do also have signal download. Um, 
I thought it could have been Signal. So this is 99% going to be the Signal uh, desktop app, which is uh, an encrypted uh, chat-based app. So it's interesting that we can see it here. Um, but what we need to do now is confirm, you know, they could have just Googled this and not actually use Signal. So we want to confirm that Signal is actually, or was actually on this machine. Um, let's see, web history is pretty much the same thing. Let's have a look if we can see anything to do with Signal in here. Uh, we've, got, we've got Tor, which is interesting, right? So a way to, to access Tor. Um, what else have we got? signal.org slash download there we go so we pretty much confirmed that this user was attempting to download signal uh, but now we need to confirm that it is actually they did actually go through and download it um, and that is the app that they were using so web downloads maybe and this is not what i was thinking of uh i mean we could actually uh, recent documents as well could show us so now we've got this very weird png here that's using emojis in the name that's the link file to that. That's quite interesting, uh, but not relevant for what we're looking at now. Uh, okay, so we, we're going on the basis, right, that we think it's Signal. We've seen them Google, uh, well, use Bing, unfortunately, uh, how, um, how to download Signal, and then we've seen them go to the Signal slash download page. And what we can do, rather than trying to just dig through this stuff manually, is we can use keyword search, um, and we're just going to type in, we'll just go, we'll just go for Signal. Uh, leave it as exact match. We're going to search for the entire disk image. Um, we can see that there's only 1,459 files that were found on the disk, so it shouldn't actually take too long. Uh, and we're going to run that search. And we'll see what comes back. Uh, so we've got run programs. We can see signal desktop is in the programs folder, which is interesting. Um, signal.exe. So yeah, they did have actually downloaded and executed um, signal installer for all of this to appear so for it to be present in uh, programs that's quite interesting uh, we can just see some of the bing stuff yeah signal desktop okay so we've seen signal desktop app on their computer uh where is this actually been where is this actually stored so for vol free window oh, that's just prefetch uh let's see if we can try and find it ourselves right so if we go to data sources uh, we can select the ei1 disk image we know it's going to be volume free um, we can just see that obviously this is the biggest length in sectors as well, and it's actually partitioned. So we'll jump into this. Uh, and I think we saw it in program files. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, it doesn't look to be in there. Let's go back. Uh, maybe program files 86. No, program data. No, okay, I might go back to my keyword search. Uh, actually, it might be installed under the user, so we're going to presume it's this Zeri D user, because um, there is actually no other custom accounts on there. So let's take a look. We have app data, it could be in there. Let's take a look in app data. We're going to go with local first. We can check roaming if we don't find anything. Uh, here we go, signal desktop update. So that might not be exactly what we need. That could just be the actual updater. Oh yeah, there we go. That's just the installer and updater. So let's go back and check uh, updater roaming instead. Up here, roaming. And there we go. We can see this signal directory. And it's probably going to be the main executable that's actually stored. Okay, yeah, we can see um, logs and the actual SQL database as well. Uh, cool. Okay, so Signal desktop application is installed on this machine. Uh, now, what did the question actually want? The question wanted us to find the decryption key. So we know it's Signal. Uh, and I'm pretty sure the hint... What did it say? Look online for online messaging apps, especially ones that can be used for communication. Yeah, so we found Signal. Try searching online for app name decryption key. So I've got Google open here. Let's go for Signal... Uh, signal app encryption key. Okay, bleeping computer article. 
Uh, cool. So a mistake of presence used by the signal desktop uh, to encrypt local desktop messages leaves them wide open to an attacker. When signal desktop is installed, it will create an unencrypted, oh no, sorry, an encrypted SQLite database called db.sqlite, which is used to store the user's messages. The encryption key for this database is generated. Okay. So it stores it in a plain text file in app data signal config.json. Okay, so that's gonna be where the encryption key is. When you open config.json, the encryption key is readily available. So that's what it looks like, right? Key and then the value of the decryption key. So if we find the path that it's saved in, oh, it should actually just be in the folder we're already in. Uh, oh yeah, here, config.json. So, and we can even see down here, um, we can see the key. So to make this easier, I'm just going to extract this to my desktop. So right click, extract files, desktop. We'll leave it as config.json. We've got the confirmation it was successfully extracted. Minimize this. So if we open config.json with notepad. Yep. Cool. There we go. So this is the decryption key for the signal desktop app uh, database. So we're gonna copy this, and I think that's all we need for the answer. Yep, just the decryption key. And we are on to question three. So what is the registered phone number and profile name of Zeri in the message application? Now, let's, let's go check out the hint before I start guessing what we need to do. So you can open the application's SQL database using one of the tools installed for you. So remember back here, we did actually see SQLite DB browser. And now that we have the decryption key, we can actually open up the database for Signal um, and we can probably pull out loads of really cool information. So if we open investigation files, which is where our tools folder is, and we open up SQLite database browser and we'll open up the executable. I'm just gonna close that. We have the key, so we need to extract the actual database. And I remember in this, this blog post here, it told us where the database is stored, I think. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, just talking about the key, where's the database? Here we go, signal sqldb.sqlite. Okay, so back into autopsy, we're gonna go pull out that database file. So it's in the SQL folder. Here's the database file. We will extract this file to our desktop. Perfect. And then we're going to minimize autopsy. We don't need the hints. So this is uh, the DB browser. So we should be able to just do open database, desktop, db.sqlite, open uh, password or raw key. So I think, well, yeah, we're going to need raw key because we have the actual decryption key uh, here. So if we copy this, uh, it needs to start with 0x, and we should be able to just paste this in. We'll leave it as um, cipher for defaults. We can always change it if it doesn't work. Ah, cool. Okay, so we're inside the database for the Signal app. Um, we're looking at database structure, which lets us see all of the tables. This is kind of how we're going to pivot around. Um, let's see what the question actually wants from us. The phone number and profile name. So I have never used Signal, so I'm not sure where this is going to be. Um, identity is kind of ringing out to me because it could be to do with like the account or the profile in the app. Uh, nothing else really stands out. So let's look at identity keys. So we'll do right click and browse table. Uh, no, there's nothing in here. Well, no, okay, nothing interesting. So we're going to go back to database structure. Uh, what else could it be in? It could potentially be sessions, I guess. Let's have a look in sessions. Uh, no, this isn't anything interesting to us. Okay, back to the database structure. Um, I mean, messages might give it away, right? Because when you talk to people you on chat apps, you typically have their name. Uh, so we could look in here. Okay, this is a bit more like it. If we scroll along, we're just going to see what columns we have. Uh, so these look like messages. I think we need to come back to this. Yeah, there's nothing about... 
nothing about the account in here. Okay, let's keep digging. Uh, not in conversations. Oh, no, wait, we checked messages, didn't we? Maybe, maybe conversations. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay, so... So the JSON here is actually going to have everything in one, so we could just copy this out to, to a notepad. Um, but it's it's kind of easier just to look at these columns. So the question wants us to gather the phone number and profile name. So profile name, we can see there's a column here for profile name, and we have this. So we can copy this out, but I'm pretty sure the emoji is not going to follow us. Um, oh, we do actually need the phone number first. Let's grab that. Uh, I'm going to, I mean, this looks like a phone number to me. That name isn't very uh, descriptive. There's nothing else. So let's copy this as the phone number. We'll do comma space. And then, what was it, profile name? Yeah, profile name is this. And we'll copy this and paste it. Yeah, okay. So we can see that the emoji there has been replaced with this question mark, question mark. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to actually find that emoji ourselves. So we already have this open. I'm just going to duplicate this tab. Uh, I'm going to go to a website called Emojipedia. Uh, so what we can do is the emoji was, what was it? It was a fire emoji. Type in fire. We can see this is the emoji here. Copy that and I'll paste. Take away the two question marks. Paste that in so it matches, right? Zeri the fire emoji, original name, uh, and we'll click submit. So that's the phone number and profile name of uh, a Zeri within the Signal app. So what is the email ID found in the chat? Now we did see some chat uh, chat messages. So if we go back to database uh, database structure, sorry, uh, and then we went into the messages table. So if we take a look in here. We did see these this this body column, which appears to have messages in it, and we can see the type is outgoing. Can we see any participants or anything? No. Okay. So these are just the messages that were in a chat. So let's drag this out so we can see all of it. And the question is asking us for the email ID. So we will go through this. I just want to quickly just answer this question. So we can see there is an email address here. So we can just right click and copy that. And we're going to submit that as the answer. Now, not trying to rush just to just to complete the lab as quick as we can. It's always kind of good just to immerse yourself in the actual scenario, um, even just a little bit, right? So we can see here, we presume, well, we have Zeri, right? Who's one of the suspects that we know. Um, we also have this person called Tom, which is just interesting intelligence for us to know. Obviously, you know, that name might be completely made up. But we can see what appears to be a conversation between Zeri and Tom. What are they talking about here? They're talking about privacy and encryption. They're talking about using Eraser and Tor. So remember, we saw um, Eraser was one of the installed programs. Okay, directing him to install and down uh, to download and install Tor and Eraser. And they're talking about bombing the city. So it appears that this potentially isn't a hoax. Uh, they're talking about a target. Asking about maybe execution time. Uh, got the time. Send me an expiring email using Tor. And then erasing the attachment as well. So presumably the attachment contained information about, about this bomb threat. Um, and they've erased it, so it'll be interesting to see if we if we need to recover that or if we can recover that. Um, cool. Okay. So yeah, this just seems like two persons of interest that are discussing uh, their plans. Um, so it doesn't really appear to be a hoax at this point. I mean, it is. It still could be right, but based on this, they are actually planning um, something. Cool. So let's see what the next question is. Uh, what is the file name, including extension? that is received as an attachment via email. So we can see that kind of part of the conversation here, right? So um, there's a conversation about using this email address to send an expiring email that there's an attachment and that they've erased the attachment as well. So I don't think we need this open anymore. So I'm going to close this for now. Uh, we don't need this decryption key. We'll close this. Let's take a look at the hint. So we're currently on question one, two, three, four, five. Recent documents may help you identify this with context from the chat logs. 
Okay, so if we go back to autopsy, we want to look at recent documents. And we'll just close out of this. Recent documents, we've got four. Uh, remember, we, we saw this file earlier, this this uh, LNK2 to a PNG file, and it has this, this countdown icon, which is what we saw previously uh, in that signal conversation. Uh, with a calendar as well, right? So this is a pretty bad way to name the file. Um, but it, it, it does seem like this is going to be something to do with the schedule um, or the incident. So we don't want the LNK file. We do actually want the, the actual PNG itself. Um, so we can we can go to this file path if, and then just extract that PNG. So we can see down here the path of it is uh, C users Zeri D uh, downloads and then those two emojis .png. So let's see if it's still in there. Uh, Zeri D downloads. So we'll go back to Vol3. Uh, just going through the virtual file system here. We'll go to users Zeri. Uh, downloads. Okay, cool. Yeah, so this is kind of what we expected, right? It looks like they have actually erased that file um, or at least moved it. So we can see it's not in the downloads file at the moment. Uh, interesting. So recycle bin, maybe. Uh, we don't know what the SID is for Zoe's account. There's nothing in there anyway. Nothing. These are just executables. So it's not going to be what we're interested in. Uh, cool. Okay. So this is a bit of, we've got a little bit of a problem here where we need to try and uh, recover this uh, after it's been deleted. So where else can we look? That's just the eraser tool. Okay. Interesting. Nice little challenge for us. It's not as easy as it's just in a desktop for us to go and pull out. Uh, okay, so let's just let's just work backwards. So where were we earlier? We were looking at recent files, recent documents. So it wasn't a downloads file. It, did we have a? Did we, what was the hint for this again? Recent documents may help you identify this. So yeah, we we found we found the the LNK the, the shortcut file that goes to that PNG. Um, but the PNG isn't actually in the downloads anymore. It has presumably been um, deleted from disk or written over on the disk. So this hint doesn't really give us any more information to help us. Um, we can see it here. I mean, okay, let's just double check the question again, right? So what is the file name including extension? So we know the file name, we know the extension, right? It's, it's the two emojis .png. Um, but the thing I'm concerned about is that we presumably need to open that file to answer this question. Um, and at the moment, I can't find the file. So for, the, for now, let's let's answer this question just so we've ticked it off. Um, we go back to recent documents. Uh, we can see it is these two emojis. So we're going to need to use Emojipedia again to grab those to answer the question. Uh, so we've got an hourglass and a calendar. So we've taken an hourglass. Uh, it could be either of these. I mean, it's very hard to tell from, from this, right? It's very small. Uh, let's just go with hourglass not done because presumably, you know, they're leading up to the attack. So we'll copy this, uh, we'll paste it in, go back to Emojipedia. We want to do calendar. It's not how you spell calendar. Uh, calendar. Yeah. It looks like this one. Uh, paste that and then it's dot PNG. Perfect. Okay, so we do need to find this file somehow. Um, okay, so I can see where I was going wrong. Um, we were looking at the hint for question five, which was the file name, which obviously we got from the LNK file. Um, but question six, where we're actually trying to find out the date and time of the attack, uh, we've actually got another hint for that here. So uh, we can see here we need to export thumbcache256.database from users, Zeri app data, local Microsoft Windows Explorer, uh, and then open it using Thumbcache Viewer so we can look at the kind of, well, the thumbnail images of that file. Um, so we can't actually get the file. So the file has been erased, presumably with that eraser uh, executable file. So we can't actually find it on disk. So what the next best thing for us to do is to take a look at this Thumbcache database, which is gonna have you know history of which files 
um, have been run and their their um their well their thumbnail images right so although we can't find the file we can see the thumbnail of the image and presumably that would hopefully give us enough um, to identify the date and time of the attack from that PNG that was shared between the two suspects. So we're going to go to the file path that's mentioned here. Uh, so user zeri, user zeri app data, local, I think it was Microsoft, Windows, Explorer, here we go, thumb cache. Okay, so uh, we were told to look at thumbcache 256, which is here. So we're going to extract this to our desktop, just like we did with the other files. Uh, this might take a bit longer, actually, because this is a bigger file. Do we have the size here? Yeah, it's much bigger than the files we exported before. So we'll let that run. Oh, OK, I lied. That was instant. Uh, so the tool for this one is going to be thumbcache viewer. So this is actually a really interesting way to see what was in that PNG image, even though the file was actually gone uh, off the disk. So desktop, we have thumbcache 256. Now we can see quite a few in here, uh, 21 results. Uh, but what is interesting is that a lot of these are zero kilobytes, so we don't really care about them. So we can filter on uh, size largest to smallest. So we can see we've got two here. Um, so we'll look at this one first. We'll just double click, or well, single click apparently. Uh, we can see here, this is the thumbnail of that PNG file. Um, and we can actually see all of it here. So we have a date. Uh, oh, okay. And they're actually using this emoji to show the time. That's quite interesting, actually. I was expecting to see like a time as well uh, in, in text. Uh, and I'm going to presume by, by the sun, it means AM uh, versus PM, because obviously this is just a 12 hour clock. So if we go to questions, uh, let's just drag this over so we can still see it. Date and time of the planned attack. So we're going to put in 01, 02, 2021. And then if I strain really hard, I can see that this is 3, uh, not 3, 9 p.m., 9, 9 a.m., 9 a.m. So what does it want it in? Hour, hour, minute, minute. So 01, 02, 2021, 09, 00. Yeah, that is nine. Just making sure. AM. Okay, so now we know when the attack is going to take place. Uh, now, all we need now is the location of where the explosive device is going to detonate. So let's take a look at the hint for this question. It's quite a long one, actually. Uh, cool. So it is possible this information was stored in a sticky note. So everybody, everybody should know the Windows desktop sticky notes you can use. Uh, we're given a file path where that application is stored. And then we need to open a database file, so plum.sqlite uh, using the database browser. Yeah, that's fine. We've already done that with a different database. Find which table the notes are stored in. And then we can decrypt the encoded result by checking recent sites visited via Tor by looking at the Tor database, which tells us what sites have been visited through the Tor browser. Okay, so we need to look at two different databases and we're gonna find out the location of the attack. So let's start at the start. We want this file path, uses Zeri app data local packages where we're looking for sticky note database. So let's jump back into autopsy. I'm gonna close thumb cache viewer. Uh, we don't need it anymore. So let's go back to autopsy. Uh, we needed to go to, I've already forgotten the file path, uses Zeri app data local packages. So local packages, and we're looking for something to do with sticky notes. Probably going to be under S, right? Oh, we've already gone past it. Skype, nothing to do with sticky notes. Microsoft sticky notes, okay. Uh, and then we're looking for plum.sqlite oh wait in the local state directory so local state we've got the database file let's extract that to our desktop how big is this oh it's tiny cool okay we need to go back to our database browser which is here 
I didn't say anything about this being encrypted. Uh, I doubt it will be just for sticky notes. So we've got a desktop, uh, not thumbcache, plum. Uh, no tables, interesting. That's not a good start. Maybe I grabbed the wrong thing. Users, Siri, update local packages. Yeah, I think I've grabbed the wrong thing here. Users, Zeri, update to local packages, yeah. Okay, interesting. There's 4096 bytes. Maybe autopsy did a, did a silly. No, that is right. Okay, I'm going to try and reload it in database browser because there presumably shouldn't be zero data in here. So let's go back here. Investigation files, tools, DB browser, open database, plum desk light. Okay, interesting. So maybe it's not as easy as we thought. Stored in a sticky note, users are data local packages and export it. Oh, wait, I think I know. It might be referencing other stuff, so we might actually need to pull out the folder rather than just the database file. So if we go back to autopsy. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to export this entire sticky notes um, uh, directory instead. Let's put this on the desktop. Done. So now we have it here. Cool. Let's open up DB browser again. Open database, desktop, sticky note folder, local state, plum. There we go, perfect. Okay, so what are we looking for again? GPS coordinates. So let's just take a look at the hint. Okay, so we've got the folder. Find which table the notes are stored in. So we're trying to find the message within a note. Uh, it's probably going to be in notes, right? And we can see this. Yeah, we can see like here. That's like the yellow color of the sticky note. Uh, we don't have any content uh, text. Oh yeah, here we go. Okay, so we've got this. I'm just going to copy this message out. Stick it in a new notepad. So this is just the ID. I'm going to delete this because this is just the ID of the sticky note. We don't need that. Uh, so hopefully the message should start from here. Uh, and then what else did the note say? Do, do, do. Find whichever note it's stored in. Cool. We can work out how to decrypt the encoded result by checking recent sites visited via Tor in autopsy by looking at slash Tor browser, browser, Tor browser, data browser. Uh, okay, so we want to go and grab this. So it looks like Tor browser is actually in the root directory. So if we go up all the way, we can see here Tor browser, browser, Tor browser. Uh, what was next? Data. Oh, no. Tor browser, data, browser. Profile.default. And then what was the file called? Places.sqlite. Uh, let's just fill this by A to B, it'd be easier. Places, so we're going to extract this database to our desktop. We're going to once again open up DB browser. Uh, we've already got it open here. Can we open up two databases at once? Uh, oh, we've already copied this message. We don't actually need this database open anymore. So I will just open places. Uh, go back to database structure here on the, the top left, just so we can see all the tables. So we're looking for browser history. So the things that stand out, history visits, I think that's pretty much it. Maybe places. So let's have a look at history visits. Nothing in there, okay. Uh, I mean, places might be it. Uh, places they visited. Yeah, okay, cool. So we can see the URL here that's been accessed via Tor. Uh, we can see Rot13. So yeah, it's going to be something, yeah, it's going to be this, right? Now we do actually have CyberChef installed locally. So if we go to the desktop, uh, we've got it here. This should open the local version. Bom, bom, bom. 
we'll wait for that to load. So we have this, right? We need to decode this. Um, and we saw that the, the suspect was uh, using Tor to search for ROT13. So we're going to try and decode it using ROT13 in CyberChef. If it loads, which it looks like it is, perfect. So I'm just going to make sure I have this copied onto my clipboard. Yeah, cool. And we're going to paste it into the input. And we want to search for ROT13. Drag this into the recipe. And there we go. Yeah, we have the GPS coordinates. So this should be it, right? I don't think we're missing anything. So we'll copy this out. Go to questions and submit. And there we go. We finished all of the questions for countdown. So just as a quick little recap of what we've actually done, looking at the questions tab. So initially we took a look at the kind of informative uh, text file that's created when a disk image is acquired. So this was using FTK Imager. We looked at the ea1.txt file. We found out um, the, the, the sector count for the, for the disk and the MD5 hash of the disk image. We then also found that the suspect had installed the Signal desktop browser. We unencrypted the database file using the decryption key, which is stored in a plain text file uh, on disk. And then from that, we were able to get their phone number, get their profile name, and look at the conversations that they've had within Signal, uh, where we found Zeri and another uh, person of interest discussing their plans. Uh, we then found an email address, which was used um, to email Zeri a file, which was this uh, hourglasscalendar.png. Uh, and then we opened up that file. No, sorry, we didn't open up the file because the file was actually erased from disk using some kind of eraser software. Uh, but what we could do is we looked at the thumb cache where it just you know, records um, what images are used. So for example here, like this default image here, right? So the way that Explorer is presenting that PNG to us, it would have been using a thumbnail of that PNG. So although the actual PNG file is gone and we, we can't get it, there's ways we probably could get it. Um, but instead, we looked at thumb cache and it showed us what that PNG was, was displaying anyway. Um, so we found the date and the time of the attack in there. And then finally, we took a look at Windows sticky notes to find um, an encoded message and then we took a look at the Tor browser history to see that the uh, suspect was looking at ROT13. And then we took that encoded message, put it into CyberChef, used the ROT13 recipe to decode it, which is where we got the GPS coordinates of um, the, the place that the attack is going to happen. So we've completed our investigation, right? At this point, we could offload all this information. We can say, we don't believe this is a hoax. Here's the time the attack is going to take place. Here's the place that this incident is going to occur um, and kind of give them some more information about the people, show them the conversations, things like that. So we've concluded our investigation. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Keep an eye out on BTLO Replay. We've got new videos coming every Friday and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to never miss a video. In the meantime, remember to join us on Discord and tune in every Friday at 6 p.m. BST for BTLO Replay. Thanks everyone and see you all next time.